Hey everyone. Now I know it's been a while since I've made a video, but I wanted to make this one about the energy supply here in Australia because there's some debate going on about it at the moment, so I thought it'd be a good time. Now, just to let you know, for those of you who aren't aware, we don't have nuclear energy in Australia. We never have. And I personally would like to, to stay that way. Now, there are some arguments for it, and um, admittedly, there's some good arguments, but there's also some arguments for renewable energy. And those two seem to butt heads as... A, a, basically opposing each other for the sake of opposing them. Now, I've got to admit, those who talk about renewable energy, or the way it's portrayed as those talking about it, it's from a, a greeny, hippie, you know, glue yourself to the road kind of view. That's not a good look. Um, I'm not any of those, but I still like the idea of renewable energy. Um, I've made a video before saying that the best source is your own energy at home with, you know, solar panels and batteries, because that way you own your electricity. But I want to talk a bit about nuclear in this as well and get your comments um, to, to see, because I'm open to, to debate, because you know, that's how science should be, you know, you talk each side and figure it out. But anyway, let's start at the start and look at what currently supplies our electricity in Australia. So this here is a live chart, or, well, this is my time-lapse chart over a day, but it shows each state and their, their power source, basically. So you can see that, well, starting off with Tasmania, they're, they're already renewable, basically. They're pretty much hydro with some wind and solar. Um, so they've, they've done it. They're renewable. Thanks for coming. Um, Western Australia, for the most part, is using gas there with some uh, renewables. A fair chunk, if you look at it. But the, the big ones, the big um, uh, high population states of Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland, they've got a big chunk of coal. And I guess that's where the real debate is coming in, replacing that. South Australia, they've got a lot of wind power, a lot of solar, and you may be aware they've got a um, big battery down there, which has helped them out um, with grid stability before. So we've actually come quite a long way already. So one thing about nuclear power is the waste, and that's really my biggest problem. No one has a solution for it. They don't. Um, Probably the closest we're getting to is in Finland, where they're building the deep underground one for, for many years and store it all down there. But ultimately, the plan, there is no plan. It's just store it and hope no one touches it for thousands of years. That's not the best plan. Now, the other thing is, nuclear energy has been around a while. I think the 1950s was when it started. So it's had a lot of time to develop, but really it's the same old thing. Uranium, nuclear fission, uh, radioactive waste. Um, Solar energy and, well, renewables in general, haven't had that development yet. So even in the last 10 years, they've come in leaps and bounds. So what we've got today isn't necessarily all we'll have in 50 years' time. Okay, so the common factor in electricity generally is the grid. No matter what produces the electricity in the first place, it still has to come over the grid. So I get a little bit frustrated when people say nuclear will solve problems because look at those problems that renewables caused in places like Texas recently. They had a really cold storm, a winter blizzard over there, right? And what did it do? It froze up their water pipes that they need to cool nuclear, had to shut it down. The wind turbines froze, so they don't spin. Solar's covered in, in snow, so it didn't work. So that's a problem in itself, the, the generation, but also the grid. Now, we've had blackouts in um, South Australia a couple of years back, people around here would remember, and it was the grid that struggled. Now, you may be aware that South Australia has a big battery bank, which can provide power instantaneously if needed, okay? So nothing's really going to beat that. But um, one thing to remember, this is about Australia, not the rest of the world. So just because someone's doing something in the rest of the world or something didn't work in Germany or didn't work over there in America or didn't work here and there, that's fine. We can learn from that. But, but we have to look at Australia. And you may have noticed that Australia is a big country and it's a sunny country. They're two main factors. So what I've done is I've done a bit of a time lapse here from um, the weather satellite and had a look at our cloud over the country. I did it over a year, but I'm not going to show a year's worth here. But the whole country is never completely covered in cloud at any one time. So we can spread these things out if we went with solar. And um, there's certainly a lot of land to throw uh, wind turbines where no one's really going to care about them. Now that still has the requirement to go across the grid. So you're still facing that grid uh, weakness, if you like. My ultimate goal would be to be able to have um, your own electricity generation at home. Uh, so if you had solar and batteries, you're running your own at home. Now that's still a bit expensive, but it's not as expensive as it used to be. 
And as I said, this is still the early development phase of renewables when it comes down to it. So it's only going to get cheaper as it's historically shown. Also, I only made, was made aware of this the other, the other day when I ran into someone, we were talking about it. Batteries aren't the only storage, they are now, but um, I was shown this, this um, concept, well, a product basically, that um, uses your solar to create hydrogen and it stores it as hydrogen energy in like these little hydrogen cassettes and then uses that as a fuel cell to make electricity at night time. So battery isn't the only option, but that's still being developed. Again, my point is it's still being developed. It's initial phases here. So I don't want to write off renewables based on how they are today because they're developing and they're developing fast. What's nuclear done? They're still doing the same old thing. Um, and we still don't have an answer for that waste. And no one's, no one's bringing that up. Um, I'm aware we have a reactor in Australia, by the way, the one at Lucas Heights in Sydney. That's for medical use. And there are some um, radioactive waste sites around the country, in, in effect. But nothing to the scale of uh, what nuclear energy would be. Now, something else that's inevitably going to come up is the increasing use of electric cars. Now, I have an electric car. I've had it for a, a few years now. Um, but going back to the psychological warfare of this team versus that team, um, I often hear that, oh, you've got an electric car, you must be a greenie. You're trying to say, well, these idiots with electric cars, what do they think they're going to run it on? Well, when I got it, I didn't, I didn't care what I run it on. I don't care where the power source came from. I got it because it's quick. It's, it's, it's a P100D, so it flies. Um, that's why I got it. Um, I wasn't trying to save the world by pretending it's some, um, you know, no climate change changing thing. In fact, I haven't mentioned climate change at all in this so far, except to point that out. But I can run, um, charge my electric car at home because I'm here during the day. So then the question is, well, okay, what if you're not at home during the day to charge your car off your solar? It's a good question. Well, let's say I drive the car to somewhere to work, somewhere, wherever. Okay, you drive to work and you're there. If companies had the charges at work for, for people who you know, work, that electricity that's been generated from all these people's solar panels at home that they're not using at home still goes into their local area grid, like within town here, if it's generated in this house, you know, it gets absorbed within the system more locally, it's still gonna have, it's, the car's still gonna be running off solar, as long as you charge it during the day, it's gonna be running off solar. But there's nothing to stop you charging up your batteries at home during the day and then charging your car from those batteries at night except at the moment the capacity isn't there because the car has a much bigger battery than the house needs okay but again it's changing and do you need to charge up every night i certainly don't sometimes i go a week without charging the thing now one thing i'm not too familiar with is the politics of all this but i know there's politics when we've got a prime minister who's overseas talking with foreign countries about a master plan that sounds a bit global when I think we should be focusing on what's good for Australia, because this is our country here. As I said at the start, I want input from all the other countries on their perspective, but I've got to look at this as an Australian issue and an Australian solution. So one thing about politics is there's usually money flowing around. Now, is this really um, clean energy that they're discussing, or are they talking a way to shift um, carbon credits or other sorts of money around the place? That's something I don't know of any examples, but um, historically that has happened with issues when um, politics comes into it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be some money flowing to their various places under different plans with this. And also having a, a centralized entity looking after something kind of is problematic. Like look at big tech, they control everything now, so it has to be run by them. Look at um, if energy is controlled by some power plant or energy company, you're bound with what it, whatever they charge you for it. Even going cashless, you've got a central entity which can see everything that's going on and now they're blatant about it and just put um, passports to go to a shop. So to get your sovereignty back over your own energy and, and a bit of your life would be a good thing. And I can only see that being possible with solar and an energy storage. I would have said battery, but now I'm thinking hydrogen as well is a possibility. And just to touch again on the money being shifted around, especially at a governmental level, if you look at Norway, they've got like heaps of electric cars most of them are they're very what they would call green which i hate that word i mean people say my car's green it's evidently red but going green in norway means it's funded by selling their oil to someone else 
so so what's really happening money's getting shifted around that's what's happening so if we if we went all even if we did go nuclear or all solar what are we going to do just stop selling coal to china we won't do that so for now we might as well just keep using the coal that we're using which is less and less every day by you by the way if you actually look at the charts here the renewables that we're using in this country is far more than i think people realize so if we can just get rid of that last bit of coal that'd be great but if we're just going to get rid of it to export it somewhere else, then that's got, going to do nothing for any emissions. Okay, so we might as well keep using it until our renewables develop. That's my, my stance on this, really. Don't just throw coal out now. Leave it on and get renewables because they are reliable if, if done right. What I don't like is good technology being used badly and politicians just honing in on one particular thing, making it sound a certain way to fit their narrative when it's not entirely accurate. Okay, so that's all I've got to say on the matter for now. Um, I'd love to hear your comments, which is mainly why I did this video. I want to hear what you're thinking, whether it's renewable, nuclear, stick with coal or whatever. Let me know. And if you're not from Australia, I still want to hear from you, but just let me know what country you're from so I can keep that in mind, knowing that obviously Australia is going to be very different to Scotland or something. Okay, now, as with most problems, they're not going to be solved by just yapping about it. So whinging on Twitter or making a YouTube video isn't actually going to do anything. It's the politicians who ultimately decide the direction of countries and we may like them or we may not like them. But um, if politics is where the problem is, I might have to go there to solve it, but we'll see. Anyway, let me know what you think and I'll see you around.